So if you want to be a physics major, this video is for you. I'm going to go into the general theme of classes that you're going to have to take throughout your four years in college, go through everything you need to know about internships and also potential career paths, which shocker, there were a lot of things that I had no idea that I was getting myself into when I majored in physics, specifically astrophysics. So hopefully I can tell you everything that you need to know beforehand. So the first theme is just Newtonian mechanics. And this is really just gonna be your first year intro level course in college. This is gonna range from everything in Newtonian mechanics, projectile motion, to electricity and magnetism, where you kind of hit on thermodynamics a little bit and then go into waves. So all of this is going to be classical physics. The second broad theme that we're gonna address is quantum mechanics. This is really where they tell you to forget everything you've ever learned in physics, like everything from middle school up until the end of your first year. Everything you've learned in classical mechanics is essentially wrong. And that's what quantum mechanics is basically about. It's about the math behind motion and subatomic particles. So this is where wave particle duality comes in, where everything is essentially a wave, but also a particle at the same time. The stuff you're gonna learn in quantum mechanics essentially contains four broader themes. Now let's tackle astrophysics and specifically stars and stellar systems. This is really going to be about the astrophysics of stars and stellar systems with an emphasis on the physical nature of stars. So this would include all of the tools of astronomy, observational, and theoretical, such as the Hertzsprung-Russell diagrams, the structure and evolution of stars, binary stars, end states like white dwarves, neutron stars, and black holes. The fourth bucket is high energy astrophysics. In this class, you learn about the electromagnetic spectrum, the multi-wavelength view of astrophysical objects, and you actually learn how to define a lot of astronomical terms like flux, brightness, luminosity, but then you go into learning Kirchhoff's law, Planck's function, and everything about black bodies, lasers, random walks, Maxwell's equations. It's really the essence of astrophysics and radiation. The fifth bucket is cosmology, which was honestly one of my all-time favorite courses. It's about the study of the origin of the universe, and I actually weave that entire concept into my common app. So it just goes to show, I really loved it. I thought I would get my PhD in it too. And the last bit is computational astrophysics. So this is where we really incorporated what we learned from the CS class that was our requirement for our major. So it was just an introductory computer science class that was very practical and you learned all of Python and astrophysics is essentially like 80% programming because we need to analyze all of that data that's coming back from telescopes and we need to analyze the images that are coming back from those telescopes to figure out what they are. Computational astrophysics is all of the tools that you use in analysis during astronomical research such as interpolation, transforms, smoothing, differentiation and integration, Monte Carlo methods, and basic computer algorithms and machine learning and parallel programming. All of this would be in Python, which is usually what most astrophysicists program in. Now that we've gone through the general buckets of what physics slash astrophysics classes actually contain, let me just give you a few tips that I've learned along the way. So the first one, no one ever really knows what's going on and you should really talk to your professor, whether it's in class or out of class, asking questions is the most important thing because there were so many classes where I was like five weeks into the class. We are in the quarter system. So it was like a 10 week class and you really, you can't learn all of quantum mechanics in 10 weeks. It's just not possible, but that's how college was structured for us. So if you're confused, please go to your teacher. Like that was my biggest mistake. I didn't really go to office hours as much as I should have until my last two years in college where my grades grew exponentially. 
So yeah, class-wise, take classes that you really, really like. If I could do it, you can do it. Just make sure you get help when you need it because physics is a very, very broad spectrum and you're essentially taught a lot of things that are later contradicted. So it makes sense that you're confused. Moving on to getting internships in college for physics. I honestly thought I had to do physics research every single summer and that really overwhelmed me because those kinds of internships where you're applying for a specific position in a specific university, there's gonna be over a thousand applicants and they only have seven spots. So it's very stressful, but research opportunities like that are usually where people trend to. A great place to apply would be the Department of Energy and larger organizations like that, that have large labs that are looking for several dozens of interns and also don't feel limited to just physics like honestly two of my most important internships weren't even specifically physics research they were physics adjacent research and my first summer after college I actually interned at an observatory with the largest refracting telescope and actually stayed inside the observatory and I got to live right next to the world's largest refracting telescope. It was so cool. And I was actually their only history intern. And it was really interesting because I ended up publishing a 24 page booklet on the history of the observatory. It was really cool learning about the history behind all of the science that we're taught in class. It was a perfect balance of science communication and also learning about the background of all of these physicists for me. So that was a great internship. So I'd recommend looking at things that aren't just physics research, but also other things potentially in the field that you could enjoy. It makes you a lot more well-rounded when you do kind of transcend that field and just explore your passions. So there are a lot of options for you when it comes to internships. You can also always intern in other realms. Like you could really intern in the realm of quantitative finance or anything that's very math heavy because physics is all just applied math and you would make a lot of money in those internships. So really don't limit yourself when you're applying. And moving on to potential career paths. So of course the biggest one is just going to grad school to get your PhD. That is by far the most common path for a physics major because four years learning physics, like you really don't learn anything. Like I don't wanna say it in a negative light because it isn't negative. Physics is one of the most broadest subjects that you could possibly pursue, like especially theoretical physics, which is the epitome of what astrophysics is. So you really can't grasp all of those concepts in just 10 weeks of one class. And taking 20 of those classes in a 10 week span each, like you're taking four classes at a time. So learning all of quantum mechanics and all of stars and stellar systems and two other classes in just 10 weeks, it just isn't possible. So that's why most researchers, if not all researchers in the field have a specialized PhD. That takes about, I'd say six years on average to get your PhD and that's the most common route. I will say it's a very difficult route because after that, the general track is going to be to get assistant professorships and then eventually build up to working in academia, getting your own research lab. And that doesn't happen particularly for everyone because there are a limited amount of tenured professorships that go out every year and only so many schools that require physics professors and have the ability to give lab resources. So that track is what everyone kind of talks about, but there are so many other than that. like. I never realized it, but you can essentially go into any field you want if you're a physics major because you've learned so many skills along the way, like all of math. Physics is just applied math, like I've said before, so you can go into any field that just requires a mathy background. So anything in business, anything in quantitative, trading, finance, any part of technology, if you have learned programming, that might be one of the best routes to go, especially if you did astrophysics because most of astrophysics is just programming and that directly translates to working with other types of data. I worked with a lot of stars and solar system data and working with large amounts of data like that and machine learning when it comes to data like that is extremely easy to transfer to just other data sets like the company I'm working for right now. So you can always go into business, technology, finance, really anything as long as you can show them the skills that you've learned along the way. So the best part I'd say 
about being a physics major is that no one's ever really not going to give you a shot in whatever field you choose to end up in. So whether you choose to stay in this field after your four years by getting your PhD or any other further higher studies, like maybe aerospace engineering or just going on to math, or whether you choose to pursue a more corporate lifestyle, there's always going to be options out there. The skills that you learn in physics from abstract problem solving to being analytical and even writing skills when you go on to write research papers are all skills that are directly applicable to most industries. So as long as you're confident, don't worry about not being able to get a job as a physics major. That would honestly be kind of hard. So I hope this video helped. And if you want to see any other physics related videos, don't hesitate to let me know down in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. And I will see you guys at my next video.